Lord, we honor you in this house, Father. Let's open our heart and just receive him today. He is the center of it all. Let him be the center of your worship this morning. Just let it all go. Just rejoice in him. Worship your way to the King. Holy God, precious light, I am your sacrifice for my words aren't enough, so I give you my life. Oh, come and kiss this place.
Thank you, Jesus. Well, you just need two things this morning, your ears and your heart. Doesn't matter how I look, but it matters what I say. Hallelujah. That's why we don't have a picture of Jesus. 
we have artists' conception of Jesus. But you don't need to know how he looks. But you need to know what he said. Because faith comes by hearing. And hearing by the word of God. Hallelujah. My wife thinks I'm handsome, but you may not. But what I have to say is what you need. Not how I look. Hallelujah. Uh, in the back, we've put out a little uh, notebook. If you want to sign up, we're going to start putting out a newsletter again. We kind of had a... Sometimes you're so busy, you don't get around to things because there's so much to do. But we're going to... I got more people to help me now. So Thank we, you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. We'll put out a newsletter. If you want it, you can put your name. But if you read on there, it says print in big letters. <laughs> Don't write your name in tongues. <laughs> and uh, so print your name and your, it's an email. We don't have time nor facility to do snail mail. And uh, in, in, even though the snails were on the ark, they, they were last. And so, but anyhow, we, is if you want to receive it by email, then you can sign up in the back. And there's also a business card. It has all our information on it. If you want to give, you can go to our website. And then also uh, there, there's a, a, a yearbook, our, the, our latest yearbook from this graduation. We now have about 1,200 graduates wow. of our Bible schools. And so there's a, this is the yearbook of the last graduation in June. And so you can see there. And go, you can look, some of it's in Amharic, so you can just see. You can't read, but uh, there's some in English also. So if you want to take a, cha- take a little bit of time and, or just take a moment to look at that, just a moment, and you can see what's happening. And we're not just here talking about it. That's, you don't spend all that money printing that if you didn't do it. Right. Hallelujah. Right. Amen. Then we have a DVD. We don't have it here. You can get a copy from Jackie if he wants to make one for you. But it's called The Gold on the Streets. It's about our homeless uh, project for our homeless men. And so they're gold. You know, when you look at a street, you don't think about gold unless you're in heaven. But here you think maybe of asphalt, dirt, rocks. In Ethiopia, you think about dirt and rocks, not just asphalt. And uh, but we found on the streets because these guys were living on the streets. We found there was gold on the streets. And so this is a DVD. It's a little bit too long to show, but if you want a copy of it, I'm sure Jackie wouldn't mind making a copy. This is your copy. And uh, that's a, this is a, I'm just doing leadership right now. And one principle of leadership is delegation. (laughs) I'm good at that. Hallelujah. Amen. And so, uh, but we're so, we're so blessed to be here. We thank you for being our family. You know, we all need family. You know, in this age we live, the family is probably the most attacked thing on the face of the earth. Because from the family, many things come. And so the devil is stealing those things by disrupting or breaking up or destroying the family. And so... Uh, we thank you for being our family. Amen. 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 In fact, when I go back, I'll be doing a parenting seminar, and we will be putting it on TV uh, and over in, in Ethiopia. You know, there's thing, many things that are controversial over there, but uh, parenting's not controversial because no one teaches on it. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. Hallelujah. So... Uh, Nobody disagrees with me because nobody <laughs> says anything. So y'all can believe with us Amen. because, you know, it's a, it's a nation. It's a fatherless nation. You know, just when you have a, a generation without fathers, it starts producing a fatherless generation in the next generation. And so, but one thing about it, even though we don't have a father on earth, We have a father in heaven. 
And so we can start having a fathered generation. That's good. Because one father will never pass away. Right. Come on. Hallelujah. Amen. And he is our father God. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Uh, they asked me what scriptures I was going to use. I said, just follow. <laughs> Even if I told you all the scriptures, you might think, well, hallelujah. But we'll just see what the Holy Ghost wants to do. We'll, we'll break it, to, uh, I believe, at 12, and then we'll come back at 1. Amen. And then, you know, I tell people, it, G, the guy fell out of the top story at midnight listening to Paul because he fell asleep. I don't think it's because Paul was boring. I think it's because he worked hard or maybe he, uh, you know, didn't sleep good the night before or something. But he fell asleep and fell out. But this is at midnight. Now, here, I don't think you've been here at midnight many times. Is that true? And see, the difference is, is they don't have electricity. They didn't have electricity. They didn't have running water. They didn't have natural gas. They didn't have sewage. They didn't have anything. But they were there at midnight. They didn't have cars. Actually, they didn't have horses. But they were there at midnight. And actually, there are forefathers. Mm. It's sure quiet in this place. <laughs> Hallelujah. I I, I, but I choose to believe you're not the frozen chosen. Come on. That's right. That's right. Hallelujah. Amen. <laughs> oh, I want you to turn with me in your Bibles, and then we're going to pray to 2 Corinthians chapter 9. And, and we'll share a testimony of things that are happening as we do our message. We'll mix it in, intertwine it. 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 8. Thank you, Lord. If you don't like the message today, uh, I'll teach on something next year different. <laughs> Praise God. Even though, even though sometimes you may not get, think too much of something, you might be surprised what you get out of it. That's true. true. You know, when you're a little kid, you don't think much of vegetables. Amen. But it, they're important. Yes. Huh? Yeah. Hallelujah. All right, let's pray. Father, we just thank you today. We thank you for the word of God. We thank you that you would speak clearly to every person in this room. Father, I didn't come to be heard. I came for you to be heard Thank you, Lord. by the Spirit of God. Thank you, Father, that your word is a life-changing word. That your word is, brings to us the destiny that you planned for us. Thank you for it. In Jesus' name, amen. 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 8. I believe it's the Bible's definition of prosperity. Come on now. That's good. You know, sometimes we have our definitions, but it's always good when you can find God's definition. Amen. That's right. It says, for God is able. For God is able. Amen. Hallelujah. For God is able. You know, prosperity does not begin with your ability, but with his ability. See, God, he, Paul starts out saying, you're able. No. That's right. That's right. And God That's right. is Come able. That's good. God is able. God is able. Amen. Now, this is more than about financial or right. material prosperity. But God is is prosperous in every way. Amen. And a lot of times, uh, we interpret things according to our own definitions. Right. 
which can be misleading if it's not the same definition that the Bible uses. Amen. You know, the Bible was originally written in Greek and, and Hebrew. So I want to talk about the word prosper for just a moment as it is what it means in the Greek and Hebrew. And uh, especially I want to focus on the Greek for right now. And that is the Greek means to have a good journey. Now, like, I'm sure all of you want to have a good journey when you go on vacation. Amen. A good journey, though, means that you're on a road. You're on a path. You know, and prosperity is not just about what you have. Right. It's also about where you're going. Huh? Yeah. Some people have things, but they're not going the right place. Some people already went the wrong way, and it's too late to change because they died. Even though they had things. So prosperity is, cannot be just about things. I mean, you can say, well, you know, I, this guy's prosperous. He has a, you know, uh, a Mercedes Benz or a half a million dollar or a million dollar house. Well, then Jesus was not prosperous. Jesus did not have a Mercedes Benz. <laughs> Jesus did not even have a home. That's why we reached to the homeless. I tell the homeless guys, I mean, you know, Jesus was the first homeless guy. <laughs> he said that foxes have holes and birds have nests, but the Son of Man has nowhere to lay his head. So follow me. Hmm? I'm not telling you to sell your home. But you should sell your selfishness. That's right. Come on. Yeah, that's good. You see, God wants to change our life. You know, and everything began with God. Right. And everything will end with God. Right. He is the Alpha right. and Omega. And when anything doesn't begin with God in our life, there's going to be a problem. Yes. And then when we forget that everything ends with God in our life, there's going to be a problem. You see, God should have the last word in everything in your life. If your body is sick, God should have the last word. Yes. Huh? Yep. Because he is the omega. Right. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. See, for all things were created by him and for him. Hallelujah. And so that means he should have the first, and he did have the first word. How I many you know? When he spoke, he had the first word. Hallelujah. Then man had a word and messed it up. But now Jesus came to be the last word. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. See, I'm glad that circumstances don't have the last word. I am glad that my feelings don't have the last word. I am glad that doubt does not have the last word. I am glad that guilt does not have the last word. I am glad that what my friends or neighbors or enemies think, their opinions do not have the last word. See, what other people think about you, don't let it ever be the last word in your yeah. life. Yeah, that's good. That's good. Don't let it be the last word of who you are or what you can do. God's word needs to be the last word. Faith comes by hearing your neighbor. No, faith comes by hearing the word of God. It's the last word. There is no Bible number two. Mainly because if you're perfect, you don't have to have a second edition. Come on now. That's good. That's good. Hello? Yeah. 
<laughs> For God is able. Hallelujah. See, God is not only able to take care of you and give you what you need, but he is able to give you a good journey. Good. That's good. So you can reach the destination that he has planned for you. Amen. Hallelujah. Yep. You see, used to, I hear, heard this a lot when I was young. And, uh, it, you know, uh, people would say, you know, I'm just doing this for God. I'm just doing this for God. But, you know, I found out many people do a lot of things for God that God does not want to do. Well, I'm just doing it for God. Well, do, well does God want to do it? Yeah. And, you know, I pastored for 28 years before I became real intelligent. And uh, <laughs> then I taught in Bible school for 10 years. And, you know, after I taught there a while, I started getting what I was teaching. I remember how I started out in ministry. Uh, my ministry started in a home, my grandparents' home. You know, they were, uh, uh, they didn't have much of an education because used to, when they grew up, you know, it was in the area of the depression times and, uh, and well, even before that, but you know, the priority was not education, but work. So education might happen, might not. And so, like, they had, like, third and fourth grade education. Although I hear that's what most people still have today after 12 years. And uh, Amen. so maybe at the fifth grade, you could quit and be the same. No, I'm not, I'm not endorsing that. But what I'm saying is that, you know, they were not very, I mean, they're not high-minded. They didn't think a lot about high things or anything. And so I, I decided to have a Bible study with my grandparents. And then also my, my grandfather's brother, he was living with them. He was there. He was a captive audience. Uh, in other words, my grandmother threatened him if he wouldn't be there. <laughs> and so I, when I would, I would teach them, you know, and I taught them. And, you know, I guess it's a good thing that my ministry started this way with somebody being honest. You know, because everybody tells you things good a lot of times. But I, I taught my grandparents something, and I asked them, uh, uh, do you understand what I'm saying? They said, no. <laughs> you know, I'm thinking, no. <laughs> now I'm thinking, what am I going to say? Because I already said, <laughs> I already said what I know. <laughs> but they don't understand it. <laughs> So I tried to make it a little bit simpler, I thought. I said, do you understand now what I'm saying? They said, no. <laughs> and so I said, okay, next week we're going to talk about this again. <laughs> because, see, I didn't know how to make it any simpler. But, you know, that's where I learned how to become simple in my preaching. Come on now. In my very first experience, I, be I learned to become simple. And so the next, next week, I, I, they got it. And you know what? I got it. Amen. Just because you understand what you're saying by the words, you might not understand what you're really saying. And so it's important that we not only understand what words mean, but what they're saying. Because words make a word. Because the Bible is not the words of God. It's the word of God. So all his words put together a word. Are you with me? In other words, all the words work together to produce a word. And that word 
became a person. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Word became flesh. And He dwelt among us. For God is able. Hallelujah. Listen to me. Prosperity is not only having what God wants you to have. But it's also achieving the destiny that God has planned for you. Because sometimes when people hear about believing for things, they forget about the journey and they believe for things. Right. And so they spend their life trying to obtain things because it's God's will for their life, but they forget they have a journey. That's true. Yeah. That's true. But the journey is really more important than the things. <laughs> Anyhow, you can't take the things with you to the end of the journey. The journey continues after this life. Because destiny is not finished until you leave. Huh? There is a future in heaven. Hallelujah. For God is able. Ooh. See, when you get a negative thought, you ought to say, God is able. Oh, come on. Come on. For God is able. For God is able. When you get a bill in the mail. Come on. Huh? Yeah. Ah. <laughs> or in your email. <laughs> yeah. When you get a bill some way, bill collectors are, I mean, bill people are very faithful. <laughs> When you get a bill, I remember when my dad was, you know, he, 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 got in, he got saved, you know. I got saved. He asked me how I got saved, and I didn't know. I didn't really know what happened. I didn't understand it fully because I came out of church that didn't teach it. And he said, well, I don't know I exactly tell you what to do. But, and so, but he ended up getting saved, and uh, hallelujah. And, you know, my dad... He was a, a professional borrower. He borrowed money for every, you know, he was a, he, he was a farmer. You know, they borrowed money every year, whether they needed it or not. And, uh, you know, all the farmers are good friends with the bankers. And uh, farmers and ranchers. And, and, and so, you know, my, my dad, I mean, he had loans. I said, Dad, how'd you get all these loans? He said, I made them. <laughs> <laughs> but then when he found out about the God and God being a God who supplies and all those things, you know, he started keeping, you know, he had notes. He had a note from the bank, you know. Uh, it was back there, it was on a piece of paper. The one he had was on a yellow piece of paper. And uh, so he kept all those notes he had in his Bible. Sweet. And I asked my dad, I said, well, why do you keep those notes in your Bible? You know, I'm thinking, well, maybe he's saving different places in his Bible with that. He said, no, all the time when my Bible's closed, I want those notes to see the word of God. <laughs> 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 Hallelujah. You know, as time went on, my dad became debt free. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. For God is able to make, mm, to cause all grace, all favor. You see, the originator of favor is God. Right. We understand favor because of God. He is the first one who ever showed favor. That's good. You know, I do, a, I do a seminar in Ethiopia on grace because there's lots of opinions about grace in different areas. And so, but grace is favor. It is God's favor. 
And you know, and the wonderful thing about grace is grace comes from someone who's greater. That's good. It's true. Oh. Yep. If I don't have, see, the idea behind grace is the one who's helping you is better or has more right. or is more able than you. Right. That's right. It comes even from someone stooping down to help somebody. Right. And so it has the idea of someone greater have, helping someone lesser. That's right. Well, I couldn't think of anyone greater to help you. <laughs> Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And God gives grace to the humble. Yep. And so, and I know you might have heard this from me before, but the message is still the same. Jesus said, truly, truly, I say it to you again. So that's why I'm saying it again this year. <laughs> but humility see when I was growing up I thought humility meant putting yourself down right that's right You're oh right. well you know I am no good no and we used to confess that in the church I went to every Sunday <laughs> you see that's when God put his headphones on and uh <laughs> How many know people get their headphones and you're talking and talking and they're, they're not even hearing what you said? You know, a parent will be over here not looking at their child. Their child has headphones on. They're saying, come over here. And then they don't come and you look. Oh, they got headphones on. And so I know that only happens in our houses. Okay. And so God is able to make favor, but humility is not about putting yourself down right. why would you put yourself down if God came to raise you up Come on, man. that would be stupid yep. of course it's not the first stupid thing we did right. Amen. hallelujah and so the Bible says he lifted us up and seated us with him in heavenly places doesn't sound to me like he's trying to put you down but humility is not about you. See, because see, people got that because the word humble means to lower yourself. So they were lowering themselves by putting themselves down. But that's not what it's mean. But it is a kingdom concept, which we don't have a kingdom now like they did back then. But the kingdom is, is that someone who needs favor from the king comes to their throne and lowers their self wow. because they need favor right. from the king. Right. And the king is the absolute authority in the kingdom. And so they can't get favor unless they come to the king. That's right. That's good. Right. And that favor was, one, one, one favor you got from the king was pardon. Yep. Which we got Thank when you. we got saved. Thank you. Hallelujah. But also... Provision. Right. Amen. Hallelujah. So, you know, f provision and pardon. Yep, that's good. How many know it says, let us come boldly yep. to the throne, because it comes from the throne. Let us come boldly to the throne of Grace. favor. Woo. Grace. Grace. Let us come boldly to the throne. So humility is not about putting yourself down, but it's about saying to the one on the throne that I need you. That's good. That's Without good. you, I can do nothing. Come on now. That's what humility is about, recognizing your need for God. Right. It's good. not about putting yourself down. That's good. Right. That's good. Thank you, Lord. It says, for God is able Oh, hallelujah. hallelujah. See, it doesn't really matter what the economy is able. Come on. Come on now. It doesn't really matter where, what country you live in. Right. God is able. Come on. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You know, we started doing this homeless project. I believe I shared a little bit. It was on that little clip that they show on the... We, we started that, started that. And there's a little picture of that revival that started, or that conference that started everything. But you know, since then, we took a second batch in. 
<laughs> hallelujah, of homeless people. You know, and then we had about 45 people living there. And we didn't recruit any of them. They all brought all of them. I mean, the people inside brought them all. And I'm going to tell you a few testimonies, and then uh, because God is able. Come on. Hallelujah. That's what the testimonies are about. You know what? Testimonies tell us that God is able. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. That's why they brought fruit back before they took the land. Fruit is testimony. It testifies that that land is what God said it is. Because he said that it is a land flowing with milk and honey. It is a fruitful land. So they brought back the fruit. The fruit tells the story. The fruit says that what God said is true. The fruit will say that God is able. Amen. The fruit will say that God is able. And you know, and even when I left, I, I, I left Tuesday after Father's Day. On Father's Day, I preached. On Father's Day, we had the graduation of the second group of homeless people. And we had that graduation on Father's Day because most people come from a, a fatherless family. And so we want to tell them about the father who never passes away. Amen. Hallelujah. And, and so we had that. And, you know, at the end, and, and see, we have like uh, maybe 35, 38 people graduating. Amen. This is the second batch. That doesn't include the first batch we had of 18 or so. And so they're graduating. So now 50 homeless people come to watch them. Different homeless people. <laughs> All their friends came to watch them. Their friends are homeless too. In fact, the only friends that homeless people have are homeless people. Huh? And so 50 guys are in the back are homeless watching these 50 guys. I mean, these 35 guys graduate. And so we talk about a good father. And then we had an altar call and seven people came forward from the homeless group. To receive Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Now, there's, this is a full place. You know, there's like probably 150 people there. Okay. And so, the next morning, we told them, okay, come back the next morning. Because we don't have a room for them. I mean, because we're already maxed out. We have people hanging on the wall. <laughs> I mean. And so, <laughs> anyhow, we told them, come back the next morning. We'll do a class with you. You know, we're going to start discipling them, the seven people. The next morning, 35 people came. And so 28 people more got saved. Thank you, Lord. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. One homeless guy said, I came here to get food. But he says, my life was changed. And so one guy came on the street for 20 years, living on the street. He said he didn't remember what it was like living in a home. He had epilepsy and a mental condition. He came to a service and uh, we cast the devil out of him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And then he just sat under the word every day. And he was a sight. You're going. But you know what? In, now he, he had medicine prescribed because the government has places that these homeless guys can go for medicine. He had medicine prescribed to him for the mental problem and a different medicine for the epilepsy. In 14 days, he said, I am, I know I'm okay. I'm going to stop my medicine. He stopped both of his medicines. He is healed, Woo! normal, Amen. in every way. He said, when I was at home, his mother remarried, and the stepfather didn't like him. He said, I ate food that an animal would not eat. That's one of the reasons he went to the street. 
But you know, a few Sundays before I left, there in the church was his mother. I don't know if the stepfather is still alive or not, but she came up to me and she goes, this is my son. Awesome. But see, they had kicked him out. They had abandoned. They were totally separate. They didn't even talk to each other. Didn't want to talk to each other. But now she goes, this is my son. Glory to God. And he smiled. He said, this is my mother. <laughs> An amazing thing. Mm -hmm. Then a guy who's not even living there, but he, he, he works in the neighborhood, and he's alcoholic, so he's friends with all these guys. Because all these guys are alcoholic and drug addicts. All of them. Mm -hmm. Or one, at least one of them. They're either alcoholic or a drug addict or both. And they're thieves. Mm -hmm. Professional. Mm -hmm. And they're liars. Professional. <laughs> and beggars. But not true beggars. I mean, they have a, a skill. And uh, <laughs> I don't know if I told this story last time. Somebody came to the church and they locked their keys in the car. I said, oh, don't worry. <laughs> we'll have them out before you know it. <laughs> But you know, when these new, new group came in, we began to see that God wanted to do more. Amen. There's a hundred thousand, there's a hundred thousand people, homeless people in Addis Ababa alone. A hundred thousand. And so I thought to myself, you could have the largest church in this country just of homeless people. The homeless church. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. But you know, we went to the people on the last day and we said, you know, how many believe that this pro, that everybody there, you know, this is a miracle because people in Addis Ababa, and I'll quit and just, I got three, four minutes. <laughs> what is that? I don't have my glass. <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> favor <laughs> you know they because <laughs> every homeless person almost is trying to steal from you and so people see them like a thief and so nobody wants to help them I mean if you give them money you give them like 50 cents right. or 30 cents Nobody gives to them but a small amount of money. And everybody sees them kind of like they saw the tax collector. Right. I mean, this guy's a thief. He's trying to rob you. And so everybody has a bad, a terrible view of homeless people. You know, they would go to a church, they give them 30 cents and tell them don't ever come back. You know? And so now some churches, they feel good. They, on Easter, they'll give them a meal. But how many of you ever lived on one meal a year? Uh, <laughs> so, I mean, it doesn't, do, it doesn't do you well that much. And so, but God has changed the people in our church. God transformed the people of our church from this program because they saw these guys change before their eyes. Even though we give clothes to the new people, the, old, the first batch gave clothes to the new batch of their own clothes. Amen. The ones we gave them. Wow. And so, and now a lot of them are starting to get jobs. Hallelujah. Woo. And, we, and we raised investing I, I don't believe in fundraising, but I believe in raising investment. Because you're, you're not just giving funds, you're investing in something. When you invest anything that God does, you ought to believe that it produces. Nobody would invest in a stock that doesn't make money. 
Nobody would invest in something that doesn't make anything. You know, I mean, if I just say, well, I'm just collecting money, and you go, what for? I'm just collecting money. <laughs> oh, yeah, well, I'll give you $1,000 if you're just collecting money. <laughs> no. But people gave throughout this time we've had since, since February till now. People have given about $7,000. That's a lot more than 30 cents. I'm talking about people over there. Are you with me? $7,000. Even a Muslim. When we did this second anniversary, a Muslim, you know, because two of the guys were Muslim before. And they got saved. They got changed, even changed their name. And, 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 you know, their Muslim friends came, and one of them came up because they're good friends. They said, I want to support this program. Wow. We have a Muslim supporting our program. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Isn't that wonderful? Awesome. I mean, how many churches have Muslims given to them? <laughs> wow. Thank you, Jesus. We have a street about two blocks from us. There's a church called Full Gospel Church. Now, they are really opposed to the word of faith. Right. <laughs> but, hallelujah, our, our, our worship leader helps them with their music. We even let them use our microphone sometime when they have special events. And you know, in, in Ethiopia, you cannot do anything without a letter with your stamp on it. Because your stamp says that the government approved you. And so, if you want to do anything, you have to get a permission with a letter and a stamp. Or you have to give a letter and a stamp to get permission. And we said, we, need to, we want to use your water baptismal tank to baptize these guys. They said, well, you can't. Or no, no, they said, they, they would normally say you can't, but they said you can, even though we didn't have a stamp. They approved it without a stamp. Wow. The taxi driver, he's a, a taxi driver is a kung fu champion that goes, travels all along the world, but he's a taxi driver. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> and he's always parked outside our compound, and he goes to that full gospel church, but he saw us feeding these guys. I don't know if you know, but it... You know, it takes a little money to feed 40 guys every day. Right. Yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah. And so that's why Jesus was not poor. Right. He's feeding 12 guys and then more sometimes all the time. And so anyhow, this guy said, I'm going to use my taxi to take you guys to go get the food and bring it here all the time. Awesome. So he always tells us, tells, takes us to get the food. We have somebody cook it off site. And so... God has done such tremendous things. One guy, one guy, you know, his parents died and they rented out the house because he was going into the military. But the people they rented the house to knew people in government and they got the name, the title of the house switched to their name. Oh my God. And when he came out of the military, the house wasn't his anymore. That's corruption. 101. And... Uh, I mean, he went into the military with a house and came out homeless. So he went to the streets because he got, was so depressed because he couldn't do it. He tried every way to get it changed. Nobody would do it. And so he was living on the streets under a bridge. I mean, a water bridge, not a highway bridge. And, uh, and so he was on his way to go burn that house down and then shoot himself. And he came by our place. Thank you, Lord. And they invited him in. And he was changed. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Then he went back to try to get his house again. They told him no. And when he walked out, he was crying even when he walked out. And a lawyer saw him. He said, what's wrong? He told him, he says, I'm going to help you. And he got his house. Come on now. 
I talked to several lawyers and they said that's almost an impossibility. Almost. They were Christians, lawyers. That's why they said almost. Because they knew that the almost part was God. Hallelujah. And so, I just want you to know God is able. I mean, to ho- a homeless guy. And I'll close with this story. One guy says, you know, one guy, he's a, he's a heavyset guy. He came up to, we have a lady that's over our ushers. Her name is Sunite. And he says, uh, can I be an usher? She said, yeah. But you can't take up the offering. <laughs> <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> yeah, not yet. Praise God. Amen. But get ready. We're going to. God's got some good things to say to you. Thank you for being part of our service today. We pray that you had a blessed time. Please take time to connect with us online at connect at christianfaithcenter.church. And be sure to mention your prayer request. We would love to hear from you. You can also check out our website at www.christianfaithcenter.church for more information on any upcoming events. On Facebook, you can find us as Christian Faith Center Dilly, Texas. Hope you will join us next week for a great time in the Lord. God bless.